A post-scarcity economy is an economy based around the idea of universal free access to goods and services. Up and including today, any economic system with a method to combat scarcity. Economy here referring to the management of resources available to close proximity to a society or tribe. Because of the scarcity, conflicts among people was inevitable. The reason for this lies in the basic necessities required for life and well-being. If, for example, in a given community, the maximum available food resources for everyone was lower than the population in the community, fights for those resources had to be conducted in order for psalms to survive and be relatively well off. This was and is the base mechanism for evolution. Because of the recognition of scarcity, economic systems had to make sure to allocate the scarce resources in the most efficient way possible. Early tribes and humans shared resources as good as they can, especially towards the children who were vulnerable and unable to gather them for their own. This inherent altruism and sharing mechanism in human psychology was used to help sick people, old people and otherwise disenfranchised. With the Neolithic Revolution, humans began to divide labor to more efficiently produce goods and services. Since now a farmer had no time but to tend to his or her crops and animals, getting resources and tools outside of his or her field of work had to be based on a basic mutual aid system. A system like this would be trade, in which one party gives away some of their goods to another party to gain some of theirs in return. To make this happen, resource possession had to be made more clearly, or otherwise people would have just taken your things and not given back anything in return. This was the beginning of property. Property had to be protected from thieves, which, to quickly summarize, led to the creation of structure stealing and protection of those. Thus law, which obviously existed in some more communal sense beforehand as well, and the execution of the law, also known as governance. Different forms of governance were used throughout human's existence, most prominently are monarchies, republics, dictatorships, and democracies. But also anarchy was a viable contester in some forms. Anarchy itself actually goes back to the origins of human socializing, where everyone is helping the collective, and the collective is helping everyone, based on a set of values agreed upon by the community. It was also in anarchy the concept of post-scarcity was discussed. Karl Marx first mentioned post-scarcity in his Grundrisse based on the idea of automation, which would overcome human labor, and productions of goods higher than the demand of them. But let me first give you some perspective of different ways post-scarcity could manifest in society. Concept 1. Basic need fulfillment. Some nations today have implemented a social system in their government or society, which can include healthcare, welfare, social aid for elderly children and disabled people, etc. Usually this is financed through taxes. Without going too deep into this, let me express what basic need fulfillment could look like and in what regard it is a kind of post-scarcity system. A concept getting more and more attention lately is the concept of universal basic income, or UBI, in which all people in society are guaranteed an income high enough to sustain a healthy life. This income usually does not overreach its financing of, of basic needs, such as food, water, shelter, medical care, and other important goods. In order for people to be still incentivized to work and produce things, in order to gain an extra income to fulfill more luxurious demands. I see UBI as a strong contender for a transitional model into a more utopian concept of post-scarcity economy, as it provides people with the basic necessities and frees them from hardship and suffering to a high degree, as it also reduces the need for mandatory employment or income, therefore opening slots to fill with automation, furthering the progress to a more pure post-scarcity society. Concept 2. Post-scarcity. If you wonder why the second concept already is post-scarcity, you have to wait for concept 3 to expand on this concept further. Post-scarcity is not always post-scarcity. Post-scarcity itself can cut down in different pieces, as well as based on a handful of assumptions. Let's talk about one, which will be even more interesting in concept 3, that is, digital abundance. Digital abundance refers to the basically effortless copying and distribution of digital goods, be it music, movies, books, software, or other things. It's safe to say that every one of us has downloaded something of the internet, copied files onto a portable storage device, or expanded an already existing file from before. This is digital abundance, a form of post-scarcity. Unlike physical goods such as food, medicine, and, and fabric, digital goods cost only memory space and electricity, which come in already abundant or compact ways, so that providing the entirety of humanity is not science fiction but modern reality. Right at this moment I am free to gain access to any information, entertainment, or software for free, if not always legal. The illegality of these things is a consequence of our current market economy, which is based on labor for income and income for survival. Since time is the ultimate scarce resource, spending it on generating income is required for almost all of us. Producing digital goods thus has to be profitable, or else it would be a waste of time, and I could be doing something else which would sustain my life instead. 
This contradiction in our economic system is a wonderful example of the impending death, but also a roadblock towards post-scarcity. But to not waste more time on this, I continue with other forms of post-scarcity. Another form which is already existent today is lending. Removing personal ownership from goods and providing them as public goods in a way for anyone to have access to anything at all times. These things obviously only work with goods which can be reused, such as cars, sports equipment, cameras, tools, books, etc. Libraries are our current access centers, as they provide books, movies and software to people usually for free. While these are phased out due to what was mentioned earlier, in principle they stand as a role model for post-scarcity society. In a future post-scarcity society, personal belongings could and would be reduced to a minimum. And instead, a city's or town's infrastructure would be based on universal access to reusable goods. Instead of owning a car, for example, cars would be parked in the city, readily available for us to use, and then park again. Now, cars are a bad example, as I think progress in self-driving cars or better infrastructure of public transportation remove them mostly from human society in general. It's at least something you can imagine. The third element in post-scarcity, besides digital abundance and accessibility of tools, would be the already mentioned automation. If human labor can be reduced to a minimum and essential goods can be produced without human hand, offering them to the public for free doesn't seem far-fetched. Again, this comes in the same spirit of accessibility infrastructure as before, but it is a way. The most important part about post-scarcity, however, are values. Today's values are based around consumption and, well, scarcity. You could take people from today, send them into a post-scarcity society, and that they wouldn't know how to conduct in it, as their entire socialization is based on hoarding, consumption and acquiring. Forget infrastructure, automation and accessibility. The true hurdle towards a post-scarcity society are people's current values. Consumerism is required for the market society to function. If no one would buy things, businesses wouldn't be able to sell goods, therefore no general income, thus the workers would not have money to spend on goods, and so the vicious circle comes to a loop. It's also simply not known to people these days that you could live in a world where scarcity is not an issue. Even if most people in the first world don't know hunger or other extreme forms of lack of access to required resources, we all can at least imagine lack of money to acquire these goods. Therefore, cut corners in our lifestyles to sometimes be able to buy something nice if we can afford those things at all. This is why I don't believe anyone alive today could handle the post-scarcity society, but it won't be happening from today to tomorrow anyways. Concept 3. True abundance. While the previous mentioned concepts, abundance was relative and just based on reduction of consumption thanks to sustainable values, reflecting real scientific truth about well-being and life, there's also a way for true abundance, not affected by the actual resources the universe has to offer to us. It's the most out there concept and so far absolute science fiction, but with improvements to transhuman engineering is possible future for us all. Let's start by something simple. Imagine we could alter the human body in a way that it doesn't require generic food anymore, but instead generates most of its energy through the sun, either by photosynthesis or solar panels, electrifying our artificial limbs or even brain. As I said, this is science fiction, but could become reality with advances in robotics, augmentation or even genetic manipulation. But an ideal way, more promising than those, is the idea of virtual reality. With advances in neurology comes the possibility of what is called mind uploading. Ray Kurzweil at Google talks about this a lot, and whether it will be reality or not is irrelevant to this thought experiment. If you could upload your current mind onto a computer and live in a virtual reality representing our own, for example, you would never require any real-world resources ever again, besides the energy needed to power your computer, which can easily be achieved with nuclear power, solar power, etc. In such a scenario, real post-scarcity could be achieved. This concludes the first video in a series exploring the ideas behind post-scarcity and transhumanism. Join me next time where I explore possible benefits of post-scarcity society. Also, don't forget to post comments if you have anything to add to these ideas. Thank you.